I'm Sharon Egan. I'm a Noongar Wajak artist. Um, Simon Gilby. Um, yeah, I'm a non-Indigenous artist that was contacted more than a year ago um, to work on this project. This artwork is about instating a sense of place that is different to what is generally a, a colonial expression of um, Fremantle. So the idea is that the, the centre of King Square, there's a point where the church land and the land that is the council land intersects at a particular point that we saw a long time ago. And that's, parallel, that's perpendicular to the um, sloping lawn of the building. Whether that's by design or some kind of mystical forces, I don't know, but it seemed an incredibly opportune um, positioning for the epicentre of the artwork and of course the epicentre of Fremantle. It's the centre of it, the town hall, the council and the church. So in that one spot is a place where we're going to have um, a didactic ring and a submerged under glass fire vessel that Sharon and I have been commissioned to um, produce that will be used in ceremony. But essentially that's the centre. And around that, in a sort of rough ellipse that doesn't conform to the grid of the, um, of the King Square, is an assembly of standing stones that come from the 14 different regions that are the home places of the 14 clans, 14 Noongar clans. So in a, um, in a process of, of very significant and appropriate consultation, we will invite the different uh, clans to contribute a stone from those regions, which means that we will have stones that are made of granite, limestone, sandstone, coffee rock, all of the different uh, expressions of the geography and the home places of those clans come in to position themselves around that central cache. So, so this artwork is being created on Wadjuk country and inviting all the other clans to be a part of it so that the clans come together. In this work, we're going to translate the Milky Way with the significant stars down into the paving within the ring of stones that will be uplights. And as well as that, picked out in the surface of the um, paving, maybe in charred Jarrah, the um, outline of the, of the dark emu. The emu, like it tells certain times of year, it'll tell you when the emus are laying their eggs because you can actually see eggs like, because it changes and you can read the seasons and when the males are looking after the eggs and, that, and everything in the sky is like a reflection of earth but we just don't know much about it whereas the ancients did they, in the installation, we have a augmented reality element, which is um, used on your phone, and you can scan it over the plaque. And we want the elders from each area, their voices to be heard, and they're still telling their own stories. The new building links um, High Street with the prison at one end and the roundhouse at the other. And I can't help but think that that passage for Indigenous people, how many people have been incarcerated wrongly on their own land, how many people have died in custody, to make one space that asserts their recognition and uh, sovereignty in a whole city um, that speaks of of the colonial project of the invasion of that land is, uh, is more than appropriate and timely. And I like to think that we are now a people of such maturity to recognise uh, that this is uh, the correct thing to do, um, led by the council 
and by inviting artists to, um, to make this happen. So it's been a really wonderful um, situation of a small project um, that as I went along, I realised that I certainly wasn't qualified to tell the story of in terms of being a, a non-Indigenous artist. In fact, um, the first person I contacted about it to ask if she had been contacted was Sharon. Yeah, when I was over the other side of Australia and was, yeah, busy with other stuff. Early on, I had Barry Maguire working alongside us. And then um, in the development through negotiations with Russell Kingdom, who's been fantastic, uh, we built a project that couldn't possibly um, really adequately address the issues of commemorating and recognising the Wajuk um, people to something that's much larger. And along the process with uh, COVID intervening and those adjustments of what was appropriate to the project it kind of um, went into a hiatus, at which point all of the designs and things that I'd begun uh, uh, really came back to happen again, but only on the condition that I could engage Sharon, who pulled the whole project together. Do you remember that first sitting down, Sharon, and looking at designs and things? Yeah, and it was all a lot clearer to me then, because I was in a different headspace when it mm. first came around. Yeah. But then after it's come around again, it was all a lot clearer, thanks to you uh, well, and Barry. Yeah, yeah, it was just beautiful. We had these, I developed designs from my own perspective, but I couldn't have any sense of real authority other than um, having collaborated with people in the past and sitting with Sharon and saying, look, this is just some ideas, but we can start from scratch. It was Sharon that just looked over the works, in my opinion, and just pick some beautiful things together. I wouldn't have gone forward if it wasn't anything other than an equal collaboration or sharing in the lead. Um, but it's worked out to be the way that we're moving forward today, which has been fantastic.